Hello dear students, I am Dr. Anita Kahar, lecturer from BSPM Dental College and your today's mentor for the very important and short topic tarnish and corrosion. Tarnish and corrosion is important for the MCQ point of view and the short answer questions. So what are the contents that we will be covering in today's topic is what is tarnish, what are the causes of tarnish, what is corrosion, what is the process of corrosion? Uh, the importance of EMF series, that is electromotive force series, classification of corrosion, and how you prevent, how you should prevent when you are doing the restorations. So starting with the tarnish and corrosion. So what is tarnish? Um, actually tarnish is came from the French word that is tarnish, that means a dull. So what is tarnish? Tarnish is an observable as a surface discoloration on the metal or even as a slight loss or alteration of the surface finish or luster. Um, it is difficult to differentiate between the tarnish and corrosion because clinically it is very difficult to, uh, to distinguish between the two phenomena. That's why in dental literature, both these terms, they are used interchangeably. So what happens due to the tarnish? The, because of the tarnish, the restoration that we have done, that we do the restoration with the carving, finishing and polishing. So if the tarnish layer get formed on this restoration, so there is a loss of the surface gloss, luster and finish. It will all decreases and it hamper the aesthetic qualities. The color parameters, what are the color parameters? The color parameters are the U, value and the chroma. They all get decreases. So what are the causes of tarnish? The first and foremost cause is the deposition of hard or the soft deposits. Now what are these deposits? These deposits are the plaque and the calculus if patient is not maintaining his good oral hygiene nicely. The second cause is thin films of oxides or sulfides on the surface of metallic restorations. Then stains due to the pigment producing bacteria, there are certain chromogenic bacteria which are present in our oral cavity that may um, cause the stains. Then the certain drugs which contains the chemicals like iron and mercury, they may also cause tarnishing of the restoration. And yes, because of the bad oral hygiene, there is a uh, discolored layer formed on the tooth or the restora uh, restoration or any appliances that the patient is wearing or although it is a prosthodontic appliances or if it is an orthodontic appliances. So if this tarnish layer is not removed, the tarnish is converted into the corrosion. That's why tarnish is a forerunner of corrosion. So what do you mean by corrosion? So the corrosion is a Latin word. The corrosion came from one Latin word that is core. Core means intense and rodent, that is rodent. Rodent means a big rat which turns away all the um, the stuff that we have in a household. So corrosion is nothing but like, it looks like that only. So it is a, so it, because of this the name is given corrosion. So what is corrosion? We have said already that tarnish is a forerunner of corrosion. So if this tarnish layer is not removed, it will convert it into the corrosion. So it is not only a surface discoloration, but it is an actual deterioration of the metal by reaction with its environment. Now, which are the environments? The environment is containing air or water, acids, alkalis, salt, and other chemicals. Now you can see this is an just a uh, common picture. This is, you can see the iron rod is there, which is kept in the environment outside the, uh, outside the home if it is if it is coming in contact with the air, water, so it will get corroded, it will get corroded. So this happens with, um, in, the oral, uh, in the outer environment. But how this occurs in our oral environment? In our oral environment, what is there? There is a saliva and the composition of saliva you all know. There is acid is there, alcohol is there, we eat. Uh, there are different uh, temperature changes occurs in our oral cavity because we eat the food that is having a different of sometimes we eat cold food sometimes it is a hot food so everything that is favorable for the tarnish and corrosion is present in our oral cavity i'm just showing you certain pictures 
so that you can understand very nicely what is how the tarnishing and corrosion um, is occurs in our oral cavity. You can see this is a picture. You can see this is a very uh, bad oral hygiene of the patient. Uh, the picture is taken from that patient. So you can see this is all this is accumulated. This is whitish deposit. You can see because of that the gum is also get inflamed. So this is all is the plaque. Sometimes in our oral cavity, this is invisible. So if you see this picture, this is looking very nicely clean teeth. But if, we, if you apply the disclosing agent, you can see all these are the hidden plaque which get seen or visible by using the disclosing agents. There are certain other pictures. You can see this is the yellowish deposits and this is hard. The previous picture was that a soft deposit that can be removed. But this is, you will have to do, this is not removed by the brushing. You will have to do scaling and polishing procedures. So this is the hard deposits. You can see the another picture on the lingual surface of the anterior teeth. And these are the uh, stains if the uh, poor oral hygiene or it can be because of any drug. Again, these are the, it can be because of the smoking. And this is, if this is stains, means if this is a tarnishing stage, it can be reversed to its original position because this is a reversible procedure. And not only on the uh, natural teeth, but it is also present on the processes. You can see these are the dangers. You can see the lingual surface on the, in between the teeth. You can see here, all these are the calculus that is deposited on the dental appliances. That is the processes. Now, how this procedure occurs in the oral cavity? As I said, saliva contains everything. That is, water is there, oxygen, chloride ions. Everything is present in our, or in our saliva, which is favorable for the corrosion to occur. And all these water, um, oxygen, the acids, they act on the metals. There is occurrence of chemical or electrochemical reaction. And because of these reactions, there is a dissolution or formation of the chemical compounds and there is a formation of corrosion products. Now, once the corrosion products get formed, these corrosion products are again accelerate the process of corrosion. So, let us see what are the differences between the tarnish and corrosion. If you see according to the extent, the tarnish, it involves only the surface. But here there is a great, great, great involvement, there is a formation of the corrosion products and there is, because of that there is a dissolution of the restoration occurs. That if you see according to the reversibility, tarnish is reversible but corrosion is irreversible procedure. And damage is seen less in tarnish while damage is more in case of corrosion. So let us move towards the classification of corrosion. There are mainly two types of corrosion that is chemical and electrochemical. Now the chemical corrosion is also known as dry corrosion or non aqueous corrosion. Now if you see the name means this will be occurring in absence of the water. That's why this is dry or non aqueous corrosion. And electrochemical corrosion is also known as electrolytic, wet or aqueous corrosion. Now here as the name suggests that means there is a presence of water is there in electrochemical corrosion. In our oral cavity, electrochemical corrosion is more common because of presence of electrolyte and which electrolyte present in our oral cavity? Yes, saliva is the electrolyte that is present in the oral cavity. So let us move towards the chemical or dry or non-aqueous type of corrosion. Now this happens because of the direct combination of metallic and non-metallic elements without involvement of the liquid. Now this chemical reaction may be due to the oxidation reaction, it can be halogenation reaction or it can be a sulfurization reaction. The most common example of chemical or dry corrosion is formation of silver sulfides in dental alloys containing the silver. As uh, if you remember or uh, if you have attended the lecture of silver amalgam in that uh, we have gone through this, there is a formation of silver sulfide in dental alloys. Another uh, example is oxidation of the alloy particles in dental amalgam. So that are the um, exam two examples of chemical or dry corrosion. Now let us moving to the electrochemical or electrolytic or weight or aqueous corrosion. 
Now it occurs in presence of water or other fluid electrolytes and it is more common in oral cavity due to the presence of our, uh, uh, in our oral cavity, the saliva. Now before moving to the electro electrolytic or electrochemical corrosion, we will have to just uh, go to the back in the 10th and 12th classes to see the electrochemical cell. Now as we all know, the electrochemical cell consists of two electrodes and electrolyte. The two electrodes, one is anode and one is cathode and electrolyte. Now in our oral cavity also, there is a, whenever the electrolytic corrosion occurs, there is a development of this electrochemical cell occurs in oral cavity. Now what is um, the role of these two electrodes? Now if you see the anode, the role of anode is here, the reaction that takes place in at anode means at anode the ion the metals they releases the electrons they releases the electrons and there is a formation of or there is a oxidation reaction of course at the anode and if you see the cathode the release electrons get consumed at the uh, cathode and there is a formation uh, there is a occurrence of reduction reactions now there is either there is a uh, occurrence of these uh, two reactions can be seen. The hydrogen gas can be formed or there is a formation of these hydroxyl ions at the cathode region. So therefore anode loses the electrons and cathode consumes the electrons. Now which will be corroded? Now if you see this electrochemical cell, you can see here this is a cathode electrode and this is an anode electrode. Now here if you see this is this, this is releasing the electron and the cathode is consuming the electron. Now, wherever the electrode which releases the electrons, there is a corrosion occurs. You can see this anode electrode, there is a corrosion occurs and there is a formation of the corrosion products and this corrosion product again accelerate the process of corrosion. So, this is all about or this is just to give you an example of how the corrosion occurs at anode. Now, in our dental practice, which are the different metals which go or which will be act as an anode and which are, which are going to corrode? For that, you will have to see the electromotive force series. Now, what is this EMF series? Now, in this EMF series, the metals are arranged in an electromotive force series in an order of their dissolution tendencies in a water. Now, here, if you see, uh, the electrode potential, you can see all these electrodes, you know, the gold, platinum, palladium, mercury, silver and copper, they are having the positive EMF values. And if you see this, these are all increasing in the positive value. So this is increasingly cathodic. The another example, you can see these are all the metals, they are showing the negatively charged. Means here the EMF values are negative and these are increasingly anodic. And how they are arranged? They are arranged by having the electrode that is hydrogen, which is having the zero EMF value. That's why, that's why this is on a standard electrode. And by comparing with this, these are these different metals are arranged. So here, these are the metals which are going to corrode first. And here also, if there are two uh, positive EMF values, so we are having the more positive EMF value will corrode last. And if you are giving an example, gold and copper, so gold, uh, copper will corrode here, gold or silver, so corrode will, uh, 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 the silver will corrode as compared to the gold. So what are the different types of electrolytic corrosion? There are four types of electrolytic corrosion, that is galvanic or dissimilar metal corrosion, heterogeneous composition, that is mixed type of composition, stress corrosion and the concentration cell corrosion. Let us move one by one. Now the galvanic or the dissimilar metal corrosion is very, very important for the short answer question and for the um, for your clinical practice also. What should you do and what should you not do in your practice? So what do you mean by galvanism? So galvanism, it refers to as a production of small electric currents in the oral cavity due to presence of two dissimilar metals. This is very important, two dissimilar metals that just we have gone through what we have seen in the EMF series. So here I have shown two pictures. You can see here is a gold crown and here is a silver amalgam restoration. So if we compare the EMF values, the gold is having the more EMF value as compared to the silver. So if 
okay uh, if you just um, uh, connect this with the electrochemical cell so this will act as an cathode and this will act as an anode and electrolyte that is saliva is present in our oral cavity so there is a formation of one complete circuit and there is a development of small electric current which causes or which is known as galvanic pain and it gives pain to the patient and that is known as galvanic pain or the galvanic shock so because of that there is a metallic taste occurs in the mouth and this metallic taste is due to the dissolution of this metallic products the corrosion product that is formed because of the dissolution of the silver so patient will may feel metallic taste in the mouth and the galvanic pain is mainly due to the stimulation of the tooth pulp means the nerves ending which are present in the tooth pulp they get stimulated and there is a, a development of galvanic pain now how will you prevent it now the prevention is mainly the first and foremost that you should avoid the dissimilar metal contacts means there should not be issue to the similar metal restoration or it can you can prevent it by coating the restoration with the varnish so that there will not be a direct contact across the two metals uh, or there is no contact across with the saliva so you will have to coat the restoration mainly the silver amalgam is get coated with the varnish layer now the next is a heterogeneous corrosion now heterogeneous corrosion is occurs because as the name suggests there is a mixed composition means this is this occurs within the structure of the restoration itself if there is a mixed composition occurs and this is due to the presence of different phases in the alloy system now here if you um, if you have gone through the silver amalgam topic yeah, in that we have seen there are different phases get formed after the manipulation means there is a formation of the gamma phase gamma 1 phase gamma 2 phase in all these phases gamma 2 phase is the weakest phase which is going to more corrode as compared to the other phases so because of this there is a different phases there is a corrosion can occur then part of the grain act as an anode and part of the grain act as an cathode now again here because of this anode and cathode the anode part of the grain will start to corrode the next is in metals or alloys the grain boundaries act as anode and the inter of the grain act as a cathode if you means if this is a grain bound so this grain boundary will act as an um, anode and it will start to corrode at the inter means the core portion will act as an cathode and, and there is a um, corrosion occurs at the boundaries so the impurities in the alloys impurities always does the corrosion so your um uh, your uh, the whatever the composition is it should be uh, pure now the corrosion can also occur at the solder joints now in solder then what we do the so the broken parts is get joined by the another part another new metal so because of this inhomogeneous composition there is a corrosion occurs now next is a stress corrosion now stress means means you are stress giving us uh, more pressure at one end means what is that a metal which has been stressed by cold working cold working means uh, the uh, the deformation that we are doing at the room temperature you are not heating it it is done at the room temperature that's why this is known as cold working so the best example that i can give that is the wire bending in the wire bending you can say this is stressed so at this stress region if this is stressed and unsafe metals are in contact with the electrolyte now that is in our oral cavity that is the saliva so if this stress and unstress it is directly in contact in the saliva for a longer period of time the stressed metal will become anode and it will corrode and ultimately at the end there is a fracture occurs the next example is the removable partial denture having the clasp or the orthodontic wires now here you can see this is an remover partial denture the patient is wearing you can see this is a clasp which is uh, on the canine tooth now here as this is a removable denture the patient is wearing it again uh, wearing it um, uh, wearing it and removing it for the cleaning washing so there is a continuous removal and the insertion of the denture occurs and ultimately because of the development of the stress this clasp get fracture the next is a concentration cell corrosion or the previous corrosion or the pit corrosion now here this uh, this is very important and this is uh, the in the name only the answer is uh, hidden now you can see the explanation for this is that 
it occurs due to the differences in the oxygen tension in the different parts of the same restorations and the corrosion starts at the lower oxygen concentration that's why this is known as concentration cell corrosion now here in the first picture now uh, this is a pit corrosion the picture for the pit corrosion now here if you see this is a pit and if this the carving is done more deeper for this pit what will happen due to the deep carving the food gate lodge here you can see this yellow portion that is a food lodge here now below the food lodgement the saliva and the uh, the saliva above this there is a differences occurs in the oxygen concentration of the saliva and this the the below part will act as an anode and again there will, will be deepening of the pit up so this is a pit corrosion now the next is a crevice corrosion now here you can see this is a gingival crevice here so this if the uh, 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 in this region if the carving is not done properly so there can be or, or if you are not uh, uh, properly use the wedges or the mattresses band in the proximal area so if the food lodgement occurs in this embrasure in this proximal region what will happen the oxygen tension that is present in the gingival cavicular fluid and the oxygen which is present in the saliva it diffuses and in this the low oxygen concentration area it will start to corrode and again there is a dissolution of the plastic cavity the proximal box the corrosion can occur so it is very very important while doing the plastic cavity uh, of, of any restoration either a cedar amalgam or any other type of the material so these are all through pit corrosion and the crevice corrosion because of the name only the another name is given for the concentration cell corrosion mainly the reason is differences in the oxygen tension the new terminology or the one thing that i have found new that is i think one time short answer question is asked on this bio corrosion now in this if you see the name bio corrosion this is related to the bacteria so the metallic activities of various microorganisms in the food debris they get collected on the surface or the proximal areas of the metallic restoration and it causes chemical attack and corrosion means they degrade the food and they causes the corrosion the micro the uh, microorganism that are involved in this they can be microaerobic or the anaerobic type of bacteria so this is mainly due to the microorganism that uh, present in the uh, food debris if the patient is not cleaning the oral cavity properly so what are the remedies how you can prevent tarnish and corrosion in oral cavity so first and foremost is reduce the surface irregularities the your restoration should be well carved well finished well polished there should not be notches pits deep pits deep carving you should avoid this next is restoration must be well finished and polished yes that we have just gone through it use noble metals that is gold platinum as we have seen in the emf values the no as the uh, noble metals have the more emf values they corrode uh, last year they don't corrode avoid dissimilar metal restoration as we have seen in the galvanic corrosion if the two dissimilar metals are there so whoever having the low emf value will get corroded then avoid creating stresses in the appliances as we have seen in the um, the orthodontic appliances or the remember partial denture class how it get fractures because of the development of stresses and which is very important is the passivation we will have to uh, do the passivation or uh, with the help of chromium titanium or aluminium now this is very very important for the short answer question which are the uh, the metals having the passivating um, property that is chromium titanium and aluminium what do we mean by passivation so passivation means certain metals they develop thin adherent and highly protective film on their surfaces when they react with the environment which is resistance to corrosion that is known as passivation and the metals having these tendencies they are known as passivating metals the examples are chromium titanium and aluminum so if i give an example the iron is uh, passivated with the chromium and it gets converted to stainless steel which is quite corrosive resistance and lastly you should advise the patient to take care of oral hygiene they should do proper uh, maintain their uh, oral hygiene by doing proper brushing uh, techniques and following the brushing techniques and all other oral hygiene measures to avoid all this development of the plaque and calculus on the or in the tooth and on the appliances also 
So these are the references from where I have taken this topic. Um, I hope uh, you understood this uh, short topic on tarnish and corrosion, which is very, very important for the MCQs, your vivas, and the short answer questions. Um, the expected questions are mainly uh, short answer questions that is tarnish and corrosion, galvanic corrosion and the remedies or the prevention for tarnish and corrosion and uh, bio corrosion. So this is all about tarnish and corrosion. Thank you.